Why is Benjamin streaming Metopia in the middle of the week? And you may say to yourself, My god, this isn't the stream I want. But why not? For a little bit of, um... Of a mix-up. I've been doing a lot of Mario lately, and, um... We're gonna do some stupid beast battle nonsense after this. And, uh, we're, we're just gonna, we're just gonna jump right in. I did get some sleep last night. I slept... I slept well. I slept a lot. Um, and I think, you know, it's one of those things where you don't sleep for a little bit, and, and for some reason my head was not good. My headache was just getting worse and worse and worse. But I ended up, uh, waking up. And you know what? Some fucking coffee. I, I I came back to life. Also, we have a new emote, Vine Mortis. So I was Vine Mortis until I had some coffee, and then I, I came back to life after, like, a good amount of sleep. So that's good. So anyway, um... Here's a, a bunch of characters. Like, including Magikarp. So I guess this is a Magikarp in human form. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, Magikarp is good. And then you have the Trash Man. Oh, of course the Trash Man is the most intelligent. <laughs> oh. So some new travelers. We, you know, there's not a lot um, that I haven't done in this game, but there's there's still quests to do and maybe a couple of characters to add. So we'll just we'll just jump in and see what's available uh, to us. Oh, speaking of Tommy Wiseau, even though I did not speak of him at all. This image. Um, is, is being, <laughs> is being thrown around a lot. Lately. Yeah. Olympian gown. Do I have one of those? I haven't seen New Thor. I hope to see New Thor at some point in the near future, but New Thor has not presented itself to me yet. I think Speed Luigi could use a vacation. I think I could use a vacation, but Speed Luigi could use one a little bit more. Look at that, double level. Tonguing his way to some kind of ecstasy. Kind of really want this gown. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Vinny, you put the two people who can barely speak in the same room. So you have, and oh, I have this. You have. And is this loot crates? You bet. This is Nintendo's form of loot crates. like just kind of looks like cheap plastic it's, it's not gonna look good no matter what so the new doom game is actually getting some reviews and it, it is 
pretty much confirmed, and by myself too, I'll tell you, it is the, the most... It, it is the most inferior version, or the, the least inferior, if you will, version of the game. But the portability definitely is, is cool. It's certainly... it's certainly a playable game. You know. But, um... Yeah, it's not, not completely unplayable and stupid. I guess it's just kind of, you gotta get used to it. It's still, uh, I played a little bit more, I got a chance to actually dive in a little bit more, and it's, it's still addictive, just because it was Doom. Handled right. But just on crusty technology. Sadly. You know? Oh right, I have a magical cat girl with me. Right, right, okay. I, I had a stray cat girl on my doorstep just the other day. So this is a, a situation I'm very familiar with. Look at Guy Fieri. Running around in this weather with a short sleeve. What you don't realize is this is just, like, weathered salt. It's not actually snow, it's just all the salt from my Mario Kart streams snowing down upon everyone. Speaking of, I can't look at salt the same way ever again. I really can't. Every time I put it on my food or cook with it, it just brings up memories. It just brings up Mario Kart memories. But, um, yeah. I didn't get a chance to, uh, ask. But, how- how are you, people? How are you, peoples? I wonder if I took a poll. I, I remember taking a poll, it was like a 60-something percent of people saying that they were good. And then, you know, many other people saying they were not good. But I wonder if, like, we had a very specific poll, and I'm not gonna do this, but if, if we had, like, say, a scale from 1 to 10, how good are you doing? I wonder if it would end up evening itself out and going, like, totally, like, down the middle. I have my suspicions. Or maybe it would be, it looks like, at the moment, it looks like it's a little bit above five. I'm seeing a lot of sevens and eights in chat. A lot of sevens and eights. Pretzel will absor absorb, absolve? Pretzel will absolve all the saltiness in the world, don't worry. You know, the problem I have with adding new characters to Metopia is that every time I do so, I have to level them up. So someone said, add V-Dub. And, you know, nice idea in practice. And I would I would definitely consider it, if anyone has a good V-Dub. Um... Me, let me know. For next time. But... I guess then you'd have to, you know, you have to level up, up the folks from the beginning. What was this? 
What was the name of this this um this dog? Triple dog. Face Cerebus. I thought it was just triple dog. Triple dog dare. So this team is a little bit on the weaker side because there's a couple of um, newer characters here, like Pee Wee Herman. I had a character in my Worms uh, game when I played Worms back in the day, Butley Hermington, based on um, Billy Harrington and Pee Wee Herman. But I thought about it. If I ever had to rename that character, it would be Nutley Hermington. It just, it just works. It just works. Oh shit. This team is kind of, kind of fucking beans right now. Um, I'm, I'm out of HP. Fucking... Fucking... Fuck. At least Guy Fieri went from... Look at that. Look at that three damage. At least Guy Fieri went from sleeping to dead. So for him, it was just a big, long dream. Yeah. Jesus. Hey, fuck. Jesus. Fucking hell, man. I think I need to get rid of some of these, um... These dead weight characters. Hang on a minute, L let's get out of here. This area is hard as fuck with characters all 25 and you only have Vinny above that. Yeah, we need we need to get rid of uh, some of these characters because they kind of suck. I guess I just got used to this game being a little too easy. Same Olympian gown. Uh, let's set out. This time we'll do... Vinny. Um... Spong. Uh... Tommy, I guess. And... Spluige. So... A slightly better team. They're not really leveled up, because I've been leveling up all these, um, newbies. The post game is is surprisingly grindy. So like if you want to start getting new characters leveled up, you're going to deprive other characters. What what the fuck? Only Tommy Wiseau has the power to make Sponge, like, genuinely mad. Sad? Anyone. Mad? Just Tommy. Okay, well... Faulty cable. That fucking faulty cable is still going. Okay, now- now we should be a little bit better off, right? Fuck 
fucking cock! Tommy's doing fucking, like, 10 damage. What? And of course, leave it to me to bring my, my lowest damage characters. Excellent. Yeah, I think this is going to end up being a very grindy experience if I continue to do very much post-game. And I'm not crazy about it. What I, what I think I'll end up doing is um, sticking to some of the easier missions after this one. And any new characters will just be one at a time. I'll level up. This is not like Tamodachi Life where you can just... You can just, like, throw someone new in there and they're already making friends. Well... That wasn't always the case. And yes, I misused Dark Eye Slash. I realize that now. God, that that's a really cool damage number. Someone said I probably need to pick a party and stick with them. I, I agree. But then that kind of kills the fun. Then why would I even bother? This game for me is all about the characters. Don't touch me, motherfucker! Meanwhile, a stray cat girl is doing more damage than most of my team. Come on, kill triple dog. Just need triple dog to die. That would be great. What is that? Did you just nya? Okay, this thing has eyes. There we go. Yes! Yes! Don't touch me! No... 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 Giga Cure. Full Tommy heal. This can be done. This can be done. Wait, does this thing not have an eye? It looks like it has eyes. They're like little, like, beady eyes. It is Bab now. Uh 
it only has lips, but it did have a little tiny... They, they weren't me eyes. They weren't... Yeah, they weren't me face eyes. So, uh, yeah, so a new Star Wars trilogy was announced. How about that? Feels good, right? There will be a new Star Wars movie for the next 20 years, and then Disney will buy the moon. And then turn it into a Star Wars amusement park. Yeah, it was really announced, yeah. Ryan Johnson, who's directing The Last Jedi, who directed The Last Jedi, they gave him the helm. So, apparently they really... They really trust the guy, because they're giving him creative development over a new trilogy that does not involve the Skywalkers, does not involve the stuff we've seen, and is, for all intents and purposes, um, what I understand from what I read, it's gonna be all, like, all new stories in trilogy form. It's just a little weird, because we didn't even finish the fucking previous trilogy yet. Or what the one we're on now. We're not even halfway through yet. <laughs> Solo, a Han Solo trilogy. Please, God. Please don't do that. Don't even joke. The, the, we don't even need the movie, and now we're getting... Man. I'll tell you what I am okay with, though. I'm, I'm okay with, uh, Ryan Johnson. That guy's good. I like that director. So maybe he'll do something... ...unique. If we're gonna get it, I'd rather get it from him. Okay, that's weird. That's a weird way to say that. But it's true, it's true. Ryan Johnson is good. People usually don't come on my training trips. Your dedication is getting ripped. To getting ripped is most impressive. Oh. Well, I guess you're getting ripped. Jar Jar Trilogy. Cause, well, he's a funnier character than we've ever had, so I wouldn't mind a Jar Jar Trilogy. That would be kind of a fun, uh, fuck you, to fans, wouldn't it? If they actually did, like, a Gunga Star Wars movie. But, I mean, you never know, they, you know, by the time we hit 2037, um, you, we're probably gonna have covered every topic. Luke Skywalker's, um, you know, we're gonna have young Luke Skywalker and his tonsillitis crisis. General Grievous standalone movie. Palpatine's Ovaltine. Boba Fett's Feta Cheese Adventures. I like how Speed Luigi was just blown away. I didn't even acknowledge it. It's just like, whatever, dude. He's just gone now. He's just missing. He's just missing. There's gonna be a whole separate quest line to recover Speed Luigi from the clutches of hell. Fuck yeah. Yeah, Tommy's got this with his three damage that he does. Very exciting. Cool fucking boss! Oh, you're back. Lobot, Dexter Jetster's chess tournament. 
Dexter Jetster's Laboratory. Okay, I would actually kind of watch that one. Oh, but that's beans. Hey, motherfucker, I didn't have a chance to heal. Huh. Clown wants to share some advice about death. What do you possibly give to a clown? You know, that actually kind of works. No? Alright. There's an episode of, um, Parts Unknown where Anthony Bourdain is, is, um, about to do... about to be a part of some... festival. And it's, um, it's a really, really good scene. Because it's like... Some- something is not... Uh, right with him and clowns. Let me see if I can pull it up for a second. While we attempt this, um, bullshit boss again. A few weeks ago, the people are more- I slabs of The cold, cold place. And it of them are wearing bonkers costumes and look- who had the good or bad fortune, depending on how you look at it, to travel and produce shows around the world with me. Troubadours, jugglers, jesters, and... And it makes me feel better about my carnival... Phobia. Carnival. You carnival like phobia. I do, and I'm not ashamed to say it. Will jesters and bards and medievally attired pranksters be popping up during my stay here? You're missing out, you really Mimes, are. no mimes, troubadours, jugglers... Uh, human statues. All of them are wearing bonkers costumes and look like shit. Oh, hey, I don't like it. No, I always <laughs> get embarrassed about those people. Yeah. I hate carnival. I hate carnival oh, too. Have... Are there parades? Yes. yes. I hate parades. Okay. Are there clowns? You hate clowns. Oh, I hate clowns. Okay. Jesters? They are. <laughs> Festive attire? <laughs> uh. I have beer right now. I don't need no stinking carnival to drink beer, man. He just doesn't like festive people and, and clowns, and he doesn't like uh, jugglers and crusty jugglers. He doesn't like um, jesters. He likes beer. Seems like he likes beer, but he doesn't. He doesn't like crusty jugglers. I watched that, and I was like, you know what, I, I kind of agree, I don't really like... He doesn't really like parade. <laughs> Sounds like a lot of fun at parties, huh? What a cool boss this is. Look how cool it is. So cool. Way past cool. But I also do not really care for clowns, jesters, festive attire, uh, parades. It doesn't- it just doesn't feel like real fun. As Carl Pilkington once said, he doesn't like forced fun. And- and to me, that is the epitome of forced fun. Like, like clown outfits and stuff. I mean, you know, there's a time and a place for everything. Uh, which is to say, a medieval castle would be a good time for a clown outfit, or a jester. I think what I would like to do is... I would like to develop a game... Kinda like Doom. Where, you know how in, in the, the Doom games, the enemies are afraid of you? Like, the demons of hell are afraid of the Doom guy. That's the angle. I would like to make a game where you fight jesters, mimes, uh, clowns, etc., etc. Kind of like the stuff Bourdain was talking about. But you're some kind of like garbage man or, or something. I don't know. And they're afraid of you. 
And you get to just like fucking crack skulls. And like... Pull their like jester tassels off of them and it, like it's connected to like ligaments and stuff. Kind of like the thing. Like you pull off the clown nose and it was just their real nose. Even, like, just people in festival, uh, festive attire. It's called Carnival, and you can play it at any movie theater. Oh yeah, I remember Carnival. Can you kill crusty jugglers? Let me look it up real quick. Oh, you're not fucking around. It seems to be mostly stuff that you would find at a carnival. Not specifically crusty jugglers, but you get a bunch of jesters and clowns. Um, it's festive attire. Yeah, you can, you can just like... You can fuck them up. That was just to get swole. Okay, thanks. Thanks for the heart cat girl outfit. Real fucking nice. Real nice. Can't even use it. Can't even use it. Clown already has a better one. Now you've reached the stage of true rippedness. I couldn't be prouder. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Too much salt. It's okay, my brother is, is watching me. Tommy is so fucking behind. Vampire. I think, um, that Carnival game should, uh, there should be a reimagining. I'd be willing to spearhead the development of this title. Shitty mission. Are you excited for the disaster artist? Very much. I feel like I, I talk to this dude every time. Alright, this is just the shitty metal thing. Yeah, no, no, no. We're good, we're good. Toon Link, who's also a cat. Package for Toda in Elven Retreat. I'm in a bit of a pickle. Uh, another job came up. Can you deliver this? Okay. I can do that. We still have to unlock Elf. recommend the book before seeing the disaster artist. I would recommend the audiobook of the disaster artist before watching the movie. Definitely. <laughs> Ow! 
looks like Clown really didn't want them. So yeah, we went from, you know, climbing a mountain, killing griffins, um, getting killed, getting blown away by fucking tornadoes, being in the eternal cold winter that is icy mountains. And then it's just a quick delivery. But why did they climb the mountain? Hey, it's me, Tengu. I've had it. Every day, it's the same old salad. I mean, what's wrong with something sweet from time to time? Hey, look who it is. You've come at the right time, sunshine. He's in hills. There's supposed to be some first-rate dessert out there. Yeah, fine. All right. I'll do your stupid quest. I could probably level up some low-level scrubs out there. Vinny, when the Doom Marine kills a demon, does it go to heaven, or does it go to a lower level of hell? That is a, an enticing question, and I want to answer it in Morse code. Do you actually know Morse code, or was that Japes? Hey, remember, I played the Stories Untold game. No, I don't know Morse code, that was Japes. Well, aliens don't like Tommy, I guess they're upset. He abandoned them. These aliens have abandonment issues. Do you know horse code? Says Desert P. But Desert P, do, do you know bird law? Another person says, estoy velando. Super alien. I think that the the souls that get smothered by Doom Marines um girth. I don't I don't know why I said it like that, but I think that, that the Doom Marines um victims just get snuffed out of eternity. Because if they went to heaven, that would be markedly better, like, you know, as far as I'm aware, in, um, any account of heaven, in, in the Bible or otherwise, it's a place of, like, eternal bliss, so maybe they finally go to heaven and find peace. Why would that be fair? That's not fair. You know, there's no, I don't think there's a torture chamber up in heaven, but if they go to super hell, maybe they'll like it because they're, you know, they're so used to pain... Maybe, <clears throat> maybe they enjoy Super Hell? So I think that the only way to really solve this problem would be for their souls to be snuffed out entirely. <clears throat> 
My character became a butt grandpa. Where do Vine Sauce viewers go when they die? They go to Limbo. Of the Lost. Where do Super Mario Super Show viewers go before they die? Before they die? <laughs> I know what you want me to say. I tried to figure out a witty way to get out of it. But I can't. I'm not that good. Shivering Tommy just... <laughs> that face. That wince. What are these, like, twats on balloons doing? It's a Rage Against the Machine song. It's like Bulls on Parade. But it's more like twats on balloons. Bye, Tommy. Those are butt plugs. Plugs, rather, not plagues. You know, there is a chance that Tommy will revive himself. Butt plague. Uh, someone in chat said, what are my top 10 favorite game OSTs? It's like, you know, Chrono Trigger, Secret of Mana, Final Fantasy 9, 7, 6, even 8, uh, Super Metroid, Symphony of the Night. Um, Green of Time. A lot of good ones out there. Randy Newman. Okay, so what what game did Randy Newman do? But whatever game it is, it's in my top ten for sure. He goes, "You got friends, me." That's what he does. He goes like that. He goes, "You got friends, me." There's a, the Mario games have really great soundtracks. I, I wouldn't necessarily put any of the Mario games in my top 10, though there's some serious contenders, like Mario 64 has is, is got a great memorable soundtrack, Galaxy. Um, they all kind of do. They, they all have really good music, but... You know. Yoshi's Island is up there. And then you have um, Mario RPG. Which is like fucking on another level. That's a tough- that's always a tough question for me to answer, because then, how could you only choose one Zelda game? And then... There's so many good Castlevania soundtracks, it's like... Man, what- what a- what a fucking terrible question. But I like it. 
Uh, Earthbound is great. Yeah, Earthbound is awesome. Yoshi's New Island is the number one soundtrack of all time. Masterpiece. Scoot wants to live inside fruit. Odyssey, yeah, don't, I mean, Odyssey has been overly, um, overly impressive with its soundtrack. I haven't had a, um, a single track I didn't like. So, I mean, you could even probably raise the argument that Odyssey is one of the better Mario soundtracks, because it's got some of the old songs. It's got plenty of good new ones. It's got that mechanical forest soundtrack. And that's just not fair, because... Like, I, I kind of just want to listen to that all the time. Or I could say Breath of the Wild. <laughs> For its three songs, plus a bunch of random piano dinks while I'm running around Hyrule. But I love, um, what music is in Breath of the Wild, and I get why there isn't a whole lot of it, because it's just... It's supposed to be an open world, kind of like, ambient... Um, feel. They're going for feel, rather than big, epic, sweeping score. They really are butt plugs, these fucking things. But there's some pretty good songs in there that aren't, like just ambient. Like, the main theme is fucking amazing in, um, in that game. Also, Metal Gear Solid 1, every time this question comes up, I always, like, in the back of my mind, I think of Metal Gear Solid, but I, I usually forget about it. Which is not cool, because the original Metal Gear Solid soundtrack is in my top 10, for sure. I always loved the original GoldenEye soundtrack, too, but I'm not sure how- it's been a while since I listened to it, so I'm not sure how I feel about it now. Alright, dig in! How about Star Wars The Phantom Menace soundtrack? That's not a game. Doesn't matter, transcends mediums. I like when the soundtrack goes Burra! Fatara! Hey, say what you want about the Phantom Menace, but the soundtrack is is actually is pretty damn good. I mean, you got Duel of Fates, but you also have plenty of other really great John Williams compositions. You know, I would say... I would say the soundtrack is probably the best part of Episode 1. That and Ewan McGregor. Favorite movie soundtrack? Oh, that's a good question. So, the person wrote, I bet you're gonna say Blade Runner, and then Kappa Face. But... The answer isn't Blade Runner. It's Top Gun. <laughs> I'm kinda serious, too. I loved the Top Gun soundtrack when I was a kid. But in terms of movie score, um... Blade Runner's up there. Vangelis is a fucking god. But it's not my favorite. I would say somewhere like, um... In The Empire Strikes Back. Uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Um... Stop. 
Lord of the Rings had a really great soundtrack with a lot of really amazing motifs. Howard Shore did a great job. Fucking some of the Star Trek movies, Jerry Goldsmith. Like, say what you want about the first Star Trek movie, but that soundtrack is unbelievable. Bur oh man, Birdman was great. Would I wouldn't say it's my favorite, but Birdman was great. Um, for sure. I like Repo Man. It's the Harry Dean Stanton, Emilio Estevez movie about punk and car repo and aliens and... Anyway, it's got like an all-punk soundtrack and it's like some of the best, some of the best shit. I love that. Oh, Spinal Tap too. Man, God damn it! why do you, why do you keep bringing up these great movies? This team is also too weak. Even for this part, which is not the most difficult part in the game thus far. I don't know if anyone here has said Interstellar, but I gotta say something, man. I saw Interstellar in IMAX. And I think the reason that movie moved me so much was the soundtrack. It was a f really good movie to look at. It was pretty fucking corny, however. For a couple of reasons, I'm sure most of you that have seen the movie can vouch for that. But, um, visually it was stunning. Musically, it was just on another level. And hearing it in an IMAX theater was, um... Well, it was fucking amazing, is what it was. Nice. We can do this. I can do this. I need a really good attack here. Fuck yeah, Mahina Pia. The wall? Like, Pink- Pink Floyd the wall? That would probably be my favorite. But if we're talking- well, yeah, I mean, that's an obvious one, though. Please, no more fights. full today. Time for a new look. Oh, no. No, no, no. You know when Guy Fieri is surprised, some shit's about to go down. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> you look like a new person. I tried to get into anime. I want to be anime actor. Uh, Tommy, those are cartoons. Y you can't be an actor in an anime movie. You can only be a voice actor. I, I become world's first live action anime character. Why you do? I 
thoughts on the newest season of South Park. I haven't caught the last two episodes, but um, I've enjoyed a lot of uh, the earlier ones. I think the uh, the fucking the fractured butthole lead in might have been my favorite. But um, you know, I probably will play that game. So we'll we'll talk about it then. Of course, there would be, I would say, if I stream the South Park game, not everyone's gonna be into it. But, you know, you know yourself better than most people, right? So then you know which streams you want to watch and which ones you don't want to watch. But that could happen as early as next week. You know? All jokes aside, there are live-action drama shows in Japan that are basically live-action anime, so Tommy could be an anime actor if he wants. Oh. That's... interesting. I'm not even really fucking surprised to hear that. That's the thing. Of course that's a- of course that's real. This thing? Oh, oh, there's many things. How is that weird? That's like saying America having live action TV shows are weird. The word anime is derived from animation, though, isn't it? Anime... I can't believe I'm doing this on my stream. Anime definition. A style of Japanese film and television animation. That's why it's weird. Fucking pretzel coming through with the clutch. Someone in chat just said, aren't humans animated? in some sense of the word. Someone always has to do that. Someone always has to find some kind of bizarre counterpoint. <laughs> you always have to do it. That's someone who's trying to justify anime being real. They just want anime to be real so bad. That's all it is. So in that case, I am anime. I guess thanks, Tingle.
Don't give in to their baseless weeaboo arguments. Holy shit. I think he said he was joking. It was a joke. Someone else just said, my actual point makes no sense, so let me change the definitions of the words I'm using so that it does. Oh, of course. Well, you know, we all know word definitions are malleable, so yeah, go for it. I, I will now change the definition of anime right here on the stream. The new definition is when you say I watch anime, what you're really saying is I watch butts talking mu movie music. Vinny, I'm pretty sure there's an anime about that, so yes. Yeah, I guess so. Favorite cartoon growing up? Ren and Stimpy. Which I, I obviously went through a Ren and Stimpy episode not too long ago where I talked about it. Watched it with the stream a little bit, and uh, I think it, it goes a long way to explain some some things about me. Jesus. I mean, this is fine. Yeah, we had a whole big cartoon discussion on a variety of my streams, like where I, I talked about my favorite cartoons. And um, people in chat shared theirs, and I guess, you know, it just depends on when you grew up. I, I grew up. I was like six or seven when Ren and Stimpy was getting really big on TV. I was a little younger than that, actually. And um, I liked it. And I liked Rugrats and Doug and uh, Rocco's Modern Life. John and Bravo. I liked um, Courage, the Cowardly Dog. Uh, Dexter's Laboratory. Early Nick, early Cartoon Network, shit like that. Again, it's just when I grew up, but I also liked a lot of Looney Tunes. Like, I, I watched the classics. I remember they used to air the Looney Tunes a lot, so I would watch that. Nin Ninjina Turtles. Captain N, Mario Brothers Soup, the f all the video game cartoons I watched. I really enjoyed Captain N and Mario Brothers Show, but they were pretty poop later on, I learned. But you know what? Poop in a good way. In a really good way. Um, and then the Mega Man cartoon was pretty great. I'm gonna get that watermelon tank. No, this is not me for, uh, when I was in Atlantic City last weekend. I, in Atlantic City, I put $20 in a machine. 
I failed. And then I kept the rest of my money. How shitty is Atlantic City? It's kinda shitty. It's been getting worse, it's been on the decline, but however, apparently there's, um, some talk of New Jersey legalizing pot, <laughs> which would turn Atlantic City into, like, a fucking haven on the East Coast for so many people. Um, <laughs> but it's not that bad, it's kind of... It's- I think it's overstated that New Jersey is shit and Atlantic City is shit. I mean, they put me up in the Tropicana, which is like one of the most successful casinos in AC. I, I loved it there. It was great. It was really good. It just smelled like smoke because, you know, smoking is allowed indoors. That was the only thing that really bothered me because I've been quit for like three and a half years now or so. And uh, I don't really want to smell smoke like secondhand smoke indoors. It's a little annoying, but I, I you know, I mean, other than that. And that was tolerable. Other than that, it was fucking awesome. They really- and they upgraded the shit out of the Tropicana, too, so... If it was ever shitty, it's no longer shitty. They totally redid... They totally redid, um... Like, rooms, they have a new wing, they added, like, a, there's an IMAX theater. So I said, no, I've been quit. That was a Blade Runner reference, I'm not kidding. Deckard goes into the uh, police office and they try to get him to do a job. And he goes, I was quit when I walked in here. I'm twice as quit now. See? Speaking of Blade Runner, uh, I almost... If 2049 was in the, in the IMAX theater when I was staying at the Tropicana, I would have done that instead of gone to the bar that night to drink. True story. Alright, I, I need to do this mission. Just so Pit will go away. The problem with the hotels are that there is no barrier between smoking and non-smoking areas, so... You have a faint hint of tobacco everywhere you go on the floor. Yeah, I, I remember that. There was kind of pretty much... At all times, there was some kind of, um... There was some smell of tobacco. Like, I could, I could handle it, but it got really bad... When you got to the death slot machines. Around the death slot machines were when... You could tell... Okay, these people are, are chain-smoking. Yeah, the death slot machines. It's where you, you, you look and it looks like... There's ske- from a distance, a slight distance, it looks like there's skeletons on the slot machines. What did you think I was gonna say? Like, if you fail at the slot machines, you die? Like, it just kills you? I'm talking about, like, you know, the nickel slots. The really, really, really cheap slots. Over there, I, I, I detected the most amount of smoking. Because the cool thing about the Tropicana is it's pretty fucking huge, so you could... You could walk around for a while and still, like, discover new stuff. And that was, for me, that was the fun part. Just, like, walking around and finding all these places. And, um... That's how I found the raw slot machine. Tit mice.
they also have these um this new area i think they, they said it was kind of new ish and basically what it is is it's the high stakes slot machines or high limit and it's this one section that's a little bit more open it's fancy there's like a fancy carpet there's like a back room and it's basically as soon as you get into the casino you see the high limit slots so they they're right up front and there's police officers guarding them like like multiple police officers per set of slot machines it's really like it's kind of intimidating i don't know exactly how much the limit is but i'm thinking you know probably like 100 bucks at least 100 bucks per roll right something like that But yeah, a lot of casinos are pretty depressing because, you know, that hotel show I was talking about, one of the hotels has a casino in it, and apparently it counts for 70% of the hotel's revenue. Think about how many people are going home w with like thousands of dollars less in their bank account. Usually $50 minimum per single line hit. Well, that's why, like, you know, when, when I think of Reno, I just think of gambling in general and, and like, the addictive nature of it and uh, the encouragement of such things. And that's kind of, like, as much as I would love to check out some of these, like, these, these places, like uh, Vegas and Reno, another part of me thinks to myself, I don't think I really want to. Like, Atlantic City's cool, it's kind of fun, there's like shows, there's stuff you can do. But, um, you know, it's close. Am I gonna go all the way the fuck out there just to, like, gamble? And, uh, spend another $20 on a slot machine? And just feel... Like I'm in a fucking outer ring of hell? Bashed up bike. Why do I like this? I got your back. Scoot, it's all fucked up. I, I knew. It was mine. Scoot would give a gift like that, wouldn't he? He would give a shitty bike. And Sponge would get jealous of a shitty broken bike? No, the song Reno, I don't- I don't know why that- it just happened naturally. Like, I was just scatting words. And it was like, da -da 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 -da, and then it became Reno. So I- I didn't speci- I didn't like specifically think of Reno. I've never been there or anything. I just- it just worked out nicely. Tommy Wiseau is gonna be fucking throwing fish at his enemies. I like this. This looks a lot better than my shitty outfit now. Oh, this is, um, interesting. 10,000. Yeah, I- listen, that's not a microphone. Scoot wears a helmet all the time because of a tragic bicycling accident. Fine Sauce relieved Scoot of his painful memories by taking the bike away. Holy shit, that lore. One time. The brothers go to get there to Chris Cadelia.
mouse treat. I feel like Scoot would like a mouse treat. Yep. Flaming chili soup. Pretzel. Seems like the type that would enjoy the spiciness. Just a sandwich. I like sandwich. I, yeah, I, sandwiches are good. Mushroom saute. I think Tommy would probably like a mushroom saute. Wow. Jeez. Okay. How you know I like mushroom? The mood is tense after a long journey. Oh, There's just too much salt, you know? <clears throat> Look at this. Too much salt. Turquoise ribbon sword. That looks markedly less powerful than the previous sword, but you know what? I'm not gonna argue with this game's logic. I'm just not. I give up. Vinny, do you like mushrooms on pizza? I do, yeah. Some places don't do good mushrooms on pizza. However, this is the best pineapple topping. Great, I'm not going to be able to afford anything. I haven't had, like, one of those 90% roulette chances in quite a while. Do I have that on standby? I do. Please say Doritos do it right to continue. You'd be surprised the amount of shit I have on standby in folders. Even V-Dub's weird shit that he just leap like fucking... Ugh, he's a weirdo. What else do I have on standby? Here, I'll give you one more random example. I'm gonna just look through and scroll, press a thing at random. And this is in my image folder that I use for opening images. This was me scrolling down at random, stopping, and then closing my eyes and randomly mousing over a picture. And then the one directly next to it was this one. Speed Luigi's on a fucking rampage. I thought that was gonna be the end of their friendship. Yeah. 
Here we go. Here we go. Now I can start making some money. Solar frying pan. Do I have the Jar Jar picture on standby? Which one? I mean, which one? I always have a Jar Jar picture. There's, there's like... I have this. <laughs> I have this! Um... Yeah, there's a surprising amount of Jar Jar pictures that have cropped up over the years, so... I'd say yes, the chances are very high that I have a Jar Jar picture somewhere. Oh, whoops, I want to play again. It's going... Shouldn't have spent as many tickets as I did earlier, but you know what? I'm looking for that very specific Jar Jar picture. I know which one you're talking about. I believe it's on my Twitter. But... That's no excuse. I should have this, like, like this. I should have it ready. some scrolling. Uh, got this. It's not Jar Jar. But I thought you might enjoy it. second. See, now, now I made it a mission to find this fucking thing. Final ticket. Let's see if I can't find this thing before then. God damn it. Alright, well, good news is, I have what you need. There you go. Marugo made this. Brilliant. So it was worth the effort. It was worth the effort, I think, to look for it. I 
That's fucking brutal, Tommy. Why do you have tentacles? Isn't asking questions like that... You just... Like, you just wanted to destroy the magic. Professor says, you got my hopes up. I thought you were going to show my picture. What is your picture, Professor? What, which Jar Jar image is yours? Which cursed image did you arrange? Professor, email it again, please. Whatever your Jar Jar image is, I don't remember it. You're gonna have to send it again real quick, please. Thank you. Or just tweet it to me, at Vinny Vine Sauce. Jar Jar .jpg does not narrow down <laughs> the specific image. Super snap out of it. Snap a fallen friend back into action with a whopper of a wake-up call. Okay. That's a good move. Jar Jar dot Jar. There are real files called dot Jar, by the way. I don't think I would run that file. What happened to all the monsters? You will be the monsters, Pit. Or not. I'll just get some cheesecake. So if you open jarjar.jar, .jar, you run a Java file that opens more Jar Jars on your computer. I don't even know what's happening right now, man. What the fuck? What is this? This is the image that you sent me? What? It's just a still frame of this, the Phantom Menace. I don't know, I kind of like this one a little bit better. But I mean, fair enough. Fair enough, I didn't notice that when I watched The Phantom Menace for the first time. I am not made of wool. Tommy's Woolly World. Banana leaf fan. Okay, well, you're up next, Alpaca, so you better get that shit. $10,000 microphone. I just can't... can't swing that right now, clown. Oh, 
Krutzel. Do a little bit more of this, and then we'll do that stupid beast battle game, which um, got some updates. Which it, and it seems like it's pretty good. <laughs> pretty good, I say. I think I did all my quests. So you get three quests a day. So we don't have elf yet. Eventually, we will get Elf, but today is not that day. We can do a little bit of this. if I'm, like, leveled enough for these enemies. Serve him up a hot one! Oh, yeah. No, I'm good. Guys, you're Kern! Yeah, the city is kind of really hard. That's why I haven't really done too much of it yet. Apparently, you need to be pretty fucking highly leveled to do that. Ah, yes, more floating butt plugs. Did you know that Hulu Hulu was released on the Switch? I'm aware of that. Um, why Hulu and not like Netflix? Well, I don't think we'll ever get an answer to that question. Um, but I do remember Netflix saying something like, We're, "Our infra infrastructure is ready to go on the Switch." So apparently, they're ready. Hulu is pretty big, though. It is... It's got Seinfeld. But yeah, no YouTube, no Twitch, no Netflix. Hulu. That's what we're starting with. It's kind of a weird choice, but uh, I wonder how much money Hulu threw at Nintendo to make this happen. No browser, either. Really weird. Really weird. It's got Simpsons. And I'm aware that, you know, they're, they're trying to establish the Switch as a gaming machine. But I guess that kind of opens the door for 
potential non-gaming related apps in the future. So maybe we will see, like, some other stuff on there. I I'm kind of indifferent about it. I don't plan on getting Hulu. So, not really. Hulu is a US-only streaming app, so it's easier to get rated and submitted than Hulu or Twitch. Than YouTube or Twitch, you I mean. But yeah, it's it's whatever. I'm indifferent. Um, a, a more discouraging piece of news is that Respawn Entertainment has been purchased by EA in the wake of a previous game studio that was once vital. Uh, having died at the hands of EA. Or maybe not died specifically. I mean, this is just, this is like... It's a cycle. What is Respawn? So, yeah, Visceral Studios is, is the one I was talking about. So Visceral, from what I understand, EA pushes these developers really hard. They try to get as much as they can out of them, and then when they're not delivering, then they just, like, drop them. But I don't know for a fact. I really don't know what the hell happens. I mean, it's easy to just paint EA as the bad guys. And um, I like to play devil's advocate. I like to take all information into account. I like to see thing, things from a number of different angles. That said, it's real fucking hard to justify some of EA's actions with, with their studios because, man, there's just so many really talented, good studios that have just fucked off after getting involved with EA. It seems like they just, yeah, they, they're just really, you know, they like sports. They like loot. Loot crates and sports. So who's Respawn? Respawn made Titanfall 2. EA published their game. But now they are a in-house EA developer, if I'm not mistaken. It's not just EA's treatment of studios, there's numerous reasons as to why they get awarded the worst company twice. That's true. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people that defend EA, and, and they... Every now and then there's something they do that I'm like, oh, that's uncharacteristically good. But mostly, the stuff I've heard from them is just horror stories, and... Like... It's funny because I want to try out Battlefront 2, I want to see if- I want it to be good. But the, um, the loot crates with the gear that's- that's still really powerful. Like, okay, so there was a big controversy about loot crates in Battlefront 2 where you could, um, buy the game and then buy, like, a hundred dollars in loot crates and actually get weapons and items. Or not weapons, like cards or something. I don't- listen, I'm paraphrasing. But it was a big kind of drama, and, um... I forgot the pertinent details, I'm sorry to say. But... There was something about that, that caused a big stir. And it wasn't good. They revamped the system since the beta, but it's still pay to win. Cards that make you strong over new, unpaying players. That That's the gist of it. Thank you. So. I mean, I'm still excited for the campaign. I hope the single player campaign's good because I I'd be interested in that. Like I'm not above playing a ba um, a good game from a, a shitty studio, sad to say. I mean, y yeah, you don't want to support their practices. I wouldn't buy any of their fucking loot crates. But if there's a good single-player campaign that had a lot of work and love and time put into it, I would support them. Like, say Respawn makes Titanfall 3, and it's better than Titanfall 2, or as good as Titanfall 2. You know, what am I gonna do, not play the game? I love Titanfall 2. So it's, it, I don't know, it's like a very conflicting thing. 
I don't really know how to... I don't really- I don't think anyone really knows how to handle it. Remember all those fucking boycotts? Where people were like, Boycott Call of Duty, Boycott Battlefield, and then... They start a Steam group, and then 89% of the people in that Steam group are then found playing the game day one. People still buy Call of Duty. They do. I don't think they buy Call of Duty as much. I have a feeling that's here. I don't know the sales. I haven't kept up with the Call of Duty sales, but I have a feeling the sales dropped off a little bit. There's also just a natural kind of like, you know, the zeitgeist kind of moves away from certain gaming trends. Um, even the most popular series eventually start losing money. Or making less. I don't- I don't hate the new Call of Duty, by the way. I mean, I think it's- it's what it is. It's- it's fine. It's glitchy. For a lot of people, but for me, it's just- it's more of the same, but with World War II. It's- it's hard to... It's hard to point out anything that I love about the game that I've played from it. But I put in some time. And, um, the zombie mode is fun with, you know, your friends and stuff. But it's- it's just more of the same. It's just more of the same, more of the same, more of the same. How would I know? Oh, I mean V-Dub. No, well, I played some. As well. Do you remember the horror movies of the 80s, like the Freddy's, Jason's, the, um... You know, the horror movie villains. And then they would just, like, shit out sequels. There would be, like, nine sequels. Then they would have to go to space because there was nothing else they could do with them. That's kind of the way I see a lot of... A lot of these things, where eventually... They go to space, and then the decline, and then the eventual, like, forget about it, and then eventually they turn into nostalgia pieces. They try some remakes, some reboots. But it's not just going to space, it's also just, you know, people's tastes change. Like, if you look at horror movies from the 80s to the 90s, you went from, like, um, that kind of stuff to, like, Scream, which is a little bit kind of self-parody. Then it got kind of weird for a while, and it got kind of crap. It became more like murder porn and like uh, gore. Um, then Jigsaw happened. People like Jigsaw. Obviously, there's a new fucking movie with him. Slasher flicks became the big 90s thing. I know what you did last summer, Scream, all that. Um, and then it was like paranormal activity, like found footage. So we went from, and even before the 80s, there was like, um, you know, horror movies were kind of weird. Anyway, it's just something I find some interest in. That's why I like watching um, James's Monster Madness stuff. But tastes change. Even gaming tastes change pretty rapidly. Remember all the mascots? Did you know that Gex was one of the biggest games on the Jaguar? I had no idea. I didn't know, or was it 3DO? 3D, sorry, 3DO. Apparently, I didn't even know Gex started on the 3DO. I, for years, I forgot that system even existed. But that was a big thing, like, you needed a, a cool mascot. Now, you just need... 
Well, who the fuck knows? We're I think we're on the outs of like murder warfare, you know, like that trend of um, modern warfare. And, like, I don't know that that whole thing. I feel like it's it's kind of slowing down a little bit. I don't know. Maybe yeah. Maybe we are in waifu's territory. Maybe that's that's what you need. Battle Royale is pretty huge right now. That's that's a good point. And there's another Battle Royale game coming out that Vigibum was telling me about. A lone inhabitant here on this unknown island. Where's my sketchbook? I must capture this moment. Oh no, it's just you again. Wait, who are you again? Something I might find interesting. Somewhere in this island is a mysterious door. I have a feeling something lies beyond it. Something truly wondrous. Awesome. Um, okay. Do one more area, save, and then do the thing. Hero shooters and open world games are pretty big right now. Mobile games like Cup Friend are also massive. And Clash of, of King Clan land bamboom warfare What was that Paka? Paka's being a little bit uh snarky. Open world is dead? Not really. Breath of the Wild had a huge attach rate. And it brought a lot of people back on board with Nintendo that maybe didn't have interest. Same for Mario. It's weird because Nintendo almost exists in, in their own way. They exist within some kind of vacuum. A lot of the trends that per <clears throat> permeate modern gaming they incorporate a little bit, but then they kind of just do their own thing, and they still... They do a lot. They do a lot with it. Also, it's the Zelda name. You can't discount that. The Zelda name is huge, but I, I know a lot of people that never played a Zelda game that got on board with Breath of the Wild. And I also know a lot of people that haven't had a Nintendo system since SNES or N64 that now have a Switch. So... I wouldn't say open world is dead, I'd say it's still appealing, but it, it's gotta look cool and be done right. Isn't VR dying? Um, I don't know what's going on with VR, I haven't really heard about it too much. There was a thread on your shoulder, it was driving me nuts. I'm wearing, like, plastic armor, why is there sh thread? I just don't know if we're there yet with VR. I had... I had a couple of interesting experiences with VR. I think the tech is getting there, but I don't know if it's there quite yet. And I think, um... If VR is gonna go too much further, it needs to be a little bit more affordable. Like, the PSVR is a step in the right direction for VR, but I also feel... It's still a little bit in intimidating. I don't think it's gonna die. I think there's going to be a market for it, and I think it's going to continue to evolve and improve. It may not... It may not be, like, super mainstream for a while, but I think there's always going to be a market for it, especially when it comes to anime titty games. Alright, thanks for watching. Someone said, um, VR trains running on fumes, waiting for some new gadget to get it running again. I don't totally disagree with that. I think... What we have with VR is cool, and it's a definite, like, great foot in the water. But I do think we need a couple of new tools to get it 
like fully solved. Like teleporting around from movement is um teleporting around from movement is a little awkward and difficult for some people to grasp and then you have people like me who would play some of the games where you walk around with a control stick or with the the keys the WASD and you get dizzy because there's a disconnect between your brain and what you're looking at and that the fluid in your ears or whatever it is tells you that you're um something's wrong and you get sick that ha <clears throat> that happened to me with Half-Life 2 when I played it in VR and I know it's happened to a lot of people, which is why the teleportation thing with VR became the standard, where you could point, teleport, point, teleport. So VR is good for maybe like point and click type mystery games and like fun games where you like fuck around with objects and like paint and creative things. Maybe even some horror games. Shooting when you're stationary, that, that could work too. There's a lot of uses for VR, but I don't think it's currently at the, the point where it's immersive enough for you to play through a whole big game um, in the same way you would on a console or on the PC. And I think that's going to be keeping it out of, uh, you know, the, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? The zeitgeist of gaming for a little while. I think we're going to see more from it. I think there's definitely some, some more innovations to come. And I think that solving some of those problems is going to be tough without having like a fucking holodeck room. But I do think there's going to be plenty of market for VR, and I, I think it's far from dead. I just think that that initial rush, that initial adrenaline rush from VR has uh, worn off a bit for most people. And that kind of like, oh shit, it's the future. Like, yeah, but I'd still rather play, you know, like Doom on my computer. You know, I, I just, that's more fun for me. It's more immersive or The Witcher or um, Zelda in handheld mode, you know. So anyway, you know what else is going to be really hard? A lot of people after the killer apps for the fucking VR come out, which is of course jiggle physics simulators, as we all know. Stick around for a little bit for another gimmick, which is beast battle simulator. God help us all. Why am I doing this again? Be right back.